Hey guys, welcome back to the Rust beginner tutorial on coding in crypto. And today we're going to be going over the basics and we're going to go over the basics for the next few videos. So we're going to just do cargo new, the basics, get a new project going. And we're going to start with primitive types and some of the type rules that Rust is going to enforce on you while you're programming. So we'll just leave this as the hello world for now. And so for starters, we mentioned this before in the previous video, but you can't overwrite in an immutable variable. So what does that look like? Well, if you do let X equals five, and then you say X equals six, Rust is immediately going to get mad at you. See, cannot assign twice to immutable variable. Pretty straightforward. Next, if you want to overwrite a variable that is immutable, you're going to have to use the let keyword. So let's overwrite that variable and see what that looks like. Let x equal five. And now we're going to say let x equal six. And that's completely acceptable. Cool. Moving on. You also can't mutate a variable's type. So if we just do a little mutate type function and we originally initialize a string and now just as a little side note, cause we're going to be talking about this in a sec, this is not declaring any data type. Rust is implicitly knowing that it's a string. And in this case, it's actually a string slice just because of what you're typing here. But we'll get into that in a second. You can actually declare data types too, but this is going to be a string slice. So if we try to take that value and we try to make it, let's say the length of it, which is going to be an integer, you can't do that. So mismatch types can't do it. And then moving on now, if you want to, again, if you want to do that and you want to mutate the type, all you have to do is use that. Oh God, I can't spell mutate is use that let keyword again. So we're just going to do overwrite type let, and I'll do a little copy paste for you guys. So you don't have to watch me type all this out. See, totally cool. As long as we use let. So basically these four examples here are telling us that let is going to be how you tell Rust that we're setting a new variable. If you use the same name, it's going to overwrite it. And this is key to Rust's compiler and the storage of your application, mainly the stack and the heap, which we're going to talk a lot about. And I encourage you to understand sort of at like a technical level, if you want a little bit more of value of what some of these things are doing for your application. It wouldn't hurt to go and take a look and kind of see how the stack and heap work because we're not going to go into super, super good detail on that. We're going to just talk about how it relates to Rust. So anyway, as I mentioned, um, we haven't actually declared any data types yet. This has all been implicit. So every time we've done this or this, Rust knows by what we're typing there what to set this variable equal to. So you could do it that way. You could code that way if you want. However, a much more common use case is going to be to declare your data types. So if any of you have ever written Java, you're going to know exactly what this is all about. You're going to want to declare your data types in, in Rust, mainly because it's best practice, but in Java, you have to. So in Rust, you have the option, but I got to say, it's a lot more helpful when you declare your data types, at least where you need to. So you can kind of go through and you can see exactly what each thing is supposed to be. And it helps you prevent those like mismatched data type errors. Just a suggestion. Um, this is what it looks like though. Right in front of your variable or right after it, you put this colon here. And we're gonna make this a U32, which I'll talk about in a sec. And set it equal to 20. So pretty cool. You could do it in line without too much more text. And what this U32 represents actually is this is one of the integer types provided by Rust. So we're gonna actually talk about integers. And 
Integers can either be signed or unsigned. So if we do let signed int and we do I, these are signed integers. And you can see it goes 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Those are all the different size bits you can have for an integer. So I don't know, let's just go with 64 for now and set it equal to 34. Now, same thing with unsigns. We do unsigned integer. You do a U, and you see we got the same options for bits. And we'll do U32, and we'll make that equal to 11. So cool. That's how you do integers in Rust. Um, Booleans are actually pretty straightforward as well. Um, if you've ever done any kind of programming before, it's very, very similar. Booleans are kind of a simple kind of design, but the one thing to take note of here is Rust actually uses the lowercase um, kind of representation here. So some languages have a capital T there, or capital F for false. Rust is going to do lower, as so. Now let's talk about some strings. So if you might have picked it up in the last video, good for you. Um, but there's obviously some complex rules involving strings in Rust. So there's actually a difference between strings and what we called slices up here. So this, where it's declared without any kind of object, it's just a raw string here, that's called a slice. So let's create a slice down here. And you know, you saw this already. If we just go ahead and do this with an inline string here, this is a primitive string, this is a slice, like we said. If you want to declare the data type, it looks like this. Now, don't worry about the and sign just yet. We're going to talk all about that and borrowing and referencing in the next video. Um, but for now, just think about it like this. This is how you represent a slice if you want to declare one as a variable. And then if we say let some string and we set the value equal to string data type, we're going to do string from, and we'll just do donut again. So super important. This is a slice and this is a string. Awesome. So as you can see, that can be kind of tricky because if you try to do operations, some operations like comparing and different things like that, you'll get a data type mismatch error. Even stuff like print behaves differently. And so it's really important to distinguish between those two things. And as we go further in these tutorials, you will see plenty of that and you'll understand exactly what I mean. So the last thing we'll cover are going to be constants. This is how you declare a constant in Rust. And wherever you declare it determines the scope of the constant. So we're just declaring it here without being inside any kind of function. So it'll be available to the rest of the program. And I'm going to make it a U32 and we'll go with 20 again. So that is really it for primitive types right now. In the next video, we're going to talk about borrowing and we're going to talk all about this and symbol and um, talk about some of the magic of Rust data types and, and some of those rules that we covered here. So thanks for watching.